We Video is a collaborative online video editor. After you create an account or log in with an existing one, you will see your recent edits listed here, and you can continue editing as needed. Start a new project by choosing Blank Edit. I am prompted to choose a project folder to save my edits in. I'll choose my practice folder and then start editing. Project folders can be shared with others, and the first time you or someone else starts a video, you will assign a folder. You can later move the video to a new or different folder and share the project as needed. I'm in timeline mode, which gives me the most editing options. If you're in storyboard mode, which looks like this, choose the three lines and switch to timeline mode. Now these tabs allow you to access various features and resources in WeVideo. This essentials library is searchable and includes stock footage you can use. Add media to your project by clicking and dragging from the media tab to your timeline. Put all images and videos on the video one track to start. We will cover uses for video two track in a moment. Drag this playhead around to preview your video and you can push the space bar to start or stop playback. I'll use this Grand Canyon clip as my intro or title clip, but it's a little long at 10 seconds. I'm going to use the time marker across the top to help me shorten it back to five seconds by clicking on the end of it and dragging it back to the five second marker. Let's add some more video clips by visiting the media tab. Any images or videos that you have uploaded for use in other projects are right here. To add some new media, click the green cloud. And from here, you can browse for video files that live on your computer or on your Google Drive. If you used a phone to record a video, it's easiest to upload your files to your Google Drive first. After you select it, media will take a minute or two to upload and process. And once you see its thumbnail, you will be able to drag and drop it onto your project timeline. Again, to trim a clip, simply click on either end of it and adjust the length with your mouse. When you adjust the length of a clip, it often creates empty space on your timeline that you can eliminate by dragging and dropping the clips together. To delete a clip entirely, just click on it and then click that trash can icon or hit the delete button on your keyboard. This will delete the clip from your project timeline, but not from your media, so you could always go back and add it again or use it in a new video. If you want to add a clip in front of existing media on your timeline, drag it in front and WeVideo will prompt you to insert it and push the other media over. Even if you put something in the wrong spot, you can easily drag and drop items around on your timeline. If you want to add something in the middle of an existing clip, you just need to create a space or a split to put it in. For example, if I want to add in a visual of what this puppy is dreaming about, I just need to put the playhead where I want to insert a different video clip. And then click the scissors icon, which creates a split in the video. Now you can insert a new video clip in the space you have created. You can also use the split tool for more precise edits. If I only want a small part of a video clip, I'll put splits around the segment that I want to keep and then I can delete the rest of it. To get rid of this empty space, I can either drag and drop the clips together, or I can hold down control and then click on all of the different clips, right click and choose close gaps. Again, use the playhead to preview your edits. And if you need to, use this undo button to undo your changes. I'll now visit the Transitions tab to smooth things out a bit. Click on any transition style to preview it. There's currently a standard and additional folder with different options. Once you find a transition that you like, click and drag it between clips. If you want to change a transition, you can just drag a new one on top of it or you can click on it and use the trash can to delete it completely. It's hard to see this tiny transition at my current zoom level, but I can use this slider to zoom in. Clicking on a transition also brings up the menu to adjust its duration and properties as well. 
Now let's add text and use the other layers to spice up this video. Video editors work on a series of layers that stack on top of one another. Right now you have two layers to start with, video one and video two. But you can add more layers as needed with this plus option. Layer one is the bottom layer. So if you put anything on top of it, like text or graphics, it will partially or completely cover it up. Let me use this picture as an example. On my media tab, I previously uploaded a picture of a puppy dreaming to use for my title clip. When I click on this picture and drag it onto the video two track, the puppy covers up part of the Grand Canyon background behind it. If this image was not partially transparent, it would block the Grand Canyon background out completely. Even though it is transparent, it's still too large, so I will click on the clip and select the pencil or open clip editor. Scale is what I'm looking for, and I will use the slider to adjust it to be the right size. I can also click on the puppy and drag it to the desired location on my screen. And this is also where you can rotate the video or image, which is great if your video clip was accidentally recorded sideways with your phone. I will cover more on animating and color keying in another video, but visit the animation tab to easily fade your image in and out. And make sure to save your changes when you're done. Let me shorten the duration the image is visible by clicking and dragging it back a little bit. And now I will preview to see how my layering is looking. Looks pretty good. Now I'm going to layer text on top of or on layer three for my title. Visit the text tab. There are four folders here of different text styles and you can preview each of them. The motion clips already have some animation effects added for you. I want my text to be on the very top layer so people can actually see it. So I'm going to drag it onto the video three track. Now I'll use the pencil to edit the text and adjust colors and placement. I can also adjust the length of the title to be shorter by clicking and adjusting the clip. There wasn't an animation tab for me to use for fades, but I can click right here to open the fade options and add one in this way. Just click in the video box and adjust the time if the one second default isn't what you want. Let's preview. Mastering the snip tool and layers will allow you to create sophisticated videos. Right now I have the puppy dreaming and then it transitions to the clip of the very scary cat that is giving him a nightmare. But it might make more sense to add that scary cat onto my layer two track so that my viewers can see both the dreaming puppy and the cat at the same time. Let me delete the cat clip from where it is on the video one track. And now I will add a picture of a thought bubble that I uploaded to my media bin from Google Images. I'll put that on the video two track and then resize it to better fit. Now I'm going to add that very angry cat clip to the video three track so it shows on top of the word balloon and shorten it to match the length of the word balloon's duration. Now the cat clip is full size, so it is completely hiding all of my other layers. The puppy and the word balloon are still there, but we can't see them in the preview window because this cat clip is on top. I'll click on the angry cat clip, choose to edit it, and I'm going to resize it so that it better fits. And so we can see the layers underneath. I'll also visit the audio tab to fade the volume in and out and the animation tab to fade the clip in and out. Let's preview it. I definitely like the visual effect of using layers much better than cutting from clip to clip in this particular instance. Now let's look at audio options. To adjust the volume of a clip, you can click on a segment, edit, and adjust the volume up to 100% or turn it down. To add your own narration, click the microphone icon and then click the red microphone.
After you record your narration, you can preview it. If you like it, click the check mark to save your media. Your narration is added to a new track called VoiceOver, and you can click and drag it around just like any other clip. You can also use the Snip tool to edit out any mistakes. If you want background music, you can add that to the Audio One track. You can upload an MP3 file to your Media tab, or you can visit this Audio tab to preview and find the right sound. Once you find one you like, drag it onto your timeline like anything else, and you can trim it just like you do your video clips. Those are the basics of editing in WeVideo. When you're all done editing your video, you will need to click Finish to export it as a video file that you are actually able to share with others or post online. WeVideo's free account does limit you to five minutes of video exporting per month, so you want to make sure you're completely done before you click Finish. After you choose a title, you need to decide where you want to export your video to. All of your videos will export to WeVideo, but you can also send them to YouTube or your Google Drive at the same time. Once you have your settings just right, click Export. Once you get to this screen, which is the video queue, you are able to exit WeVideo. You'll get an email when your video is done processing, and when you go back to check for it, your video will be located on the Exports tab. Simply double-click on it to view it. From here, you can get its link or download it. And if you elect it to export to Google Drive or YouTube as well, you can find your video in those destinations also. WeVideo is a powerful online video editor for creating and sharing your video projects.